Hi, I'm Dave from boynaband.com, and today I'll be teaching you the dream of every guitarist who's ever wanted to be a producer, and producer who's ever wanted to be a guitarist. How to play synth sounds with your guitar, thanks to the Axe FX Ultra. I'm afraid it is exclusive to the Ultra, so if you're only in possession of a standard, perhaps you can just play some rave music really loud while you're playing the guitar and pretend you're in control. And I warn you, this is really cool, so you might have to buy even darker rockstar shades after learning how to do it. So, I'm going to start by scrolling to the bypass setting, which is right at the end on the Ultra. Then, if we go to layout mode and move in a few blocks, we're going to create an amp followed by a cab. And we're going to change the amp to jazz mode type rather. Just because it doesn't have too much distortion and it just boosts the volume nicely and that's the whole point of having the amp in the cab in this case. Now if we go back to the layout screen and move just before the amp we can put in our synth block. The Axe's magic allows you to track what the guitar is playing and replicate a synth sound from that, so a clean signal makes for better results, and that's why we put it before the amp and cab block. You can distort it later on, and with the synth block in, take a listen to the guitar. This is where you can noodle away and pretend to be a 1980s video game. Once you're done with that, I'll explain the options. First thing to note if we open up with edit and scroll through the pages, this is a two voice synth. While it's still monophonic, meaning it can only play one note at a time, this means that you can have two different tones from that one note. And for now, I'll turn the level down on voice two. So if we scroll to the fourth page, and just take that level right down. And this will allow us to concentrate on what a single voice does. So scroll back to page one. And firstly, we have type. This defines what waveform the oscillator is making. For anyone that just thought I said something about an octopus riding the waves, I'll go ahead and explain what that means. An oscillator produces a sound wave of a specific shape. It does this many times per second, which creates a harmonic tone. And depending on the shape of the wave it produces, the tone changes. I'll illustrate this with the different types available. Firstly, we have a sine wave. This is the purest sound available, really good for deep bass sounds. If you wanted to make a bass really rumble some speakers, try adding one of these a few octaves down for live performance and watch as people start throwing up on each other in the crowd. Next on our list is triangle. This is a slightly harsher wave, but not by much. The sine is a curve, whereas the triangle is a straight line, kind of going up and down like a pyramid. Next, we have square wave. This switches between the highest point possible and the lowest point possible instantly in the wave, resulting in a much harsher sound. This is often used for hollow sounding basses. Then we've got Sawtooth, which ramps up, then drops down, making a similarly harsh sound, but with a bit more tonality to it. This is what you'll hear in trance lead synth sounds. Random is kind of just what you'd expect. Garbled sound. White noise is all frequencies evenly, so just... Uh, noise. And pink noise is all octaves evenly, so still just a uh, noise, only slightly different noise. And we're going to make a nice trance lead synth, so go for Sawtooth and move on. Track determines how the axe tracks the notes you play. It should be set to pitch and env by default, so it knows what notes you hit and when you hit it, mirroring the volume of the note you play as it fades out. Env stands for envelope. 
but there's also quantize if we play a note on pitch and env. Could you hear quantize transposes the note to its exact position. So if you're slightly out of tune, it'll sort you right out. Then if we do the other side, env only just plays the envelope and just plays a single tone whenever you hit a string, no matter what you hit. And off, which might be quite loud. Ouch. Just makes noise all the time, but as you noticed, it's pretty loud. So we're going to stick with pitch and env. Next up is frequency, which allows you to change the pitch of the note if you set it to env only or off. But after that is shift, which allows you to shift the note that's played up or down 24 semitones. This is great for spreading your sound over a few octaves to thicken it up. Tune is next, which allows you to change the pitch much more subtly. You might wonder why you'd do this, but if two voices are slightly detuned against each other, it makes a much thicker sound. This is one of the ways you go from a cheesy video game synth to a big arena filling professional one. And lastly is duty, which if we quickly squi which if we quickly switch back to square square wave. acts as a pulse width modulator. Defining how long there is between each pulse on the square wave. And this can make much sharper wave tones, as you heard. It also works on the triangle wave, but we're going to ignore it like we would an attention-seeking child and stick to the saw wave. The next page has level and pan, which are just volume and how far you're going to send it to the left or right, as you'd expect. But filter is how much of the sound you want to cut off. Removing frequencies is a common way of making more complex synth sounds, known as subtractive synthesis, but you don't need to know that. In fact, forget I said it at all. Subtractive synth or what? I, I don't know, I didn't say anything. Move on. Q defines the bandwidth of the filter, so it can give quite a buzzy tone when the filter is lower down. Check it out. We're going to leave the filter nice and high though. And the attack is the attack time of the envelope follower, so basically how long till the synth kicks in. Now, if you remember, there are two voices, and I said if you detune two voices slightly, then they thicken up. Now, I'm going to put in the other one. on Sawtooth. And what does I detune it? Much better. And there you have it, the basics of synths. Now, add another synth block, some drive and amp distortion, delay and reverb, and you can get a nice epic sound out of it. I hope this has been a useful beginner's guide to synth guitaring, and you can get to work revolutionising both the rock and dance worlds with your newfound skills. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.